Hi everybody, I hope you're well. Um, I'm, I've just recorded a video because Google Meet's down today and I wanted to say hello. Uh, I've got a little little task for you to do before you start your weekend. Um, as you know, the IGCC hasn't been cancelled yet uh, formally, so we continue to prepare um, as if there is an exam. Um, that might change, it might not change, we just have to carry on until we hear something. Um, and that's good news in a way because it means that we don't have any any doubt and, and we've got, got a purpose, we've got a reason to, to continue. Um, and uh, we are in the middle of this fantastic uh, topic as well of the Arab-Israeli conflict. So today we're just going to um, continue um, and um, think about why Camp David, um, the Camp David Agreement, um, actually didn't bring peace to the whole region. It brought peace between Israel and Egypt, but it didn't necessarily bring peace to the whole region. Can you open the other document? And you'll see that you can stop this video obviously when you need to, but you'll be able to see the, the photo of the three who signed Camp David. You'll remember Jimmy Carter, the American president, Menachem Begin, the um, Israeli prime minister, and President Sadat. Now Sadat, of course, was, was assassinated, as you know, by an Islamic group that couldn't forgive him for betraying the Palestinians. But for Menachem Begin, it was hailed a success. Um, it meant that they could then uh, transfer troops up from the south, Sinai, of course, north and east. And that gave them the opportunity to think about how they could pursue the PLO. Well, where the PLO fled to, you remember they had fled to Lebanon. So if you look at that map of Lebanon, why is Lebanon an unusual country? So I've got a little task you, for you there to look at um, the, the people. Lebanon obviously has different religious groups in a way that other Middle Eastern countries don't. They, had, they have a Christian a majority, small majority, there's a, there's a balance. And the Muslims are divided between Druze and between Shia and between Sunni. Lebanon's a rich country, actually. It's got um, a very, the Christians particularly have a middle class, urban middle class in Beirut. They trade, they're based um, in on the sea, on this big port of the sea, um, and they were quite a successful business community. The Muslims in the, of the countryside tended to be poorer. So you've got these kind of divisions. Uh, and Lebanon is also um, a financial center which contributes to the wealth and it's mountainous. Uh, it's a cliche to say it, but it's quite a useful idea that Lebanon is a bit like Switzerland. There's a Switzerland, the Middle East. It's got it's got these different languages, these different nationalities, or, or different ethnic groups, I should say, um, religious differences. But it's also got this kind of business drive as well. And then the Palestinians arrive, and will that make it easier or harder to govern? Um, the next task I, I have on that is once you found out a little bit about Lebanon, there's a link there. I want you to find out about what's called the Coastal Road Massacre um, in 1978. Um, and what happened was, oh, just a brief summary and then you can look it up. The Palestinians Liberation Organization realized that they could go by boat uh, from Lebanese coast down south to Israel uh, and launch it attacks from there. And that's indeed what happened. What they were trying to do was destabilize the Camp David talks in 1978. So that gave the Israelis a motive uh, to try to make an attack. Um, and they, they, they briefly went in and they, they came back out again. There was lots of, um, they couldn't antagonize Sadat at that stage. But then in 1980, 1981, 1982, there are these continual raids uh, and the Israelis were looking for, Mechin, Benachim Begin was looking for some kind of pretext, some kind of excuse. And he finds that excuse um, in 1982. So I want you to find out what that excuse is. Right, so the Israelis attacked June 1982. Um, they codenamed it Operation Peace 
in Galilee. Can you imagine why? Of course, they think it's going to bring peace to Galilee. And over the next three years, the Israeli army was basically in Lebanon. Lebanon had a Christian presidency. Um, the Christians partly welcomed the Israeli arrival because it helped them. They knew the Israelis and them both disliked the PLO presence there. The president himself um, wasn't prepared to attack the Palestinians. That would have been a problem for him. But he did let these Christian militias called the Christian phalangists roam around with their weapons, their guns. And with the Israeli arrival, these phalangists thought, here's our opportunity. And so famously, they attacked two refugee camps in September of 1982. Now, the excuse for this was that someone had assassinated Gamayel, the Lebanese president. Now, it wasn't the Palestinians. It was almost certainly uh, a Syrian agent. The Syrians had intervened from the east as well. So can you see what a mess Lebanon is? We've got Syrians, Israelis, the PLO arrival, and this weak Christian-led government. Um, and because the weak, the government was weak, of course, what happens is people take the law into their own hands, much like they did, they, have, they, they think they are doing in America at the moment. You get, you get these mobs, these groups, these, 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 these uh, thugs arming themselves and saying, you know, the, government's, the government can't control the situation, we're going to take control. So you'll see at the bottom of this document um, that the Christian phalangists entered these refugee camps and assassinate, kill thousands of people. So the last little task is for you to just look at a BBC report and just pick out a few phrases that explain why this intervention by Israel was bitterly condemned by the world. So that's it. The Israeli invasion of Lebanon, there were reasons for it, it had a tragic outcome ultimately, um, and the Israelis were roundly condemned by the rest of the world. So if you work through that document, it will take you the lesson, I would think. Please take it seriously. It's obviously our only, only lesson this week. I understand it's the, the end of the week. But to have a great weekend when you've done it, um, and uh, I'll have a look at that. Take care.